webinars and as Q4 is approaching and as Amazon has grown to great heights this year, I think sourcing is one of the most important topics to talk about. And while we're on the topic of sourcing, we need to understand that you need to make sure that your product is different and you need to make sure that your product is actually of good quality. And while ensuring that the first country that comes in mind is India. And to make sure that we are sourcing from India properly, we have um, Mekla and Margaret here from Virtual um, Indian Sourcing Network, which is going to be so fun because she's one of my favorite sourcing people to talk to. And we're going to have a lot of fun today because we're going to be talking about top 10 categories for 2021. But we will also be giving product suggestions. And these suggestions, make sure that you're not taking it um, too seriously, we're just giving you product examples and I will be teaching you how you can use our tool to, um, you know, find more products for your business. So let's meet our experts. Let me bring up Mekla on the screen right now. Hi, Mekla. And our other Hi, speaker, Ria. Mark. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for being here. I understand that you all had a webinar already today and this is like your second <laughs> webinar. Yes, second one for the day, luckily. Yes. <laughs> wow. We were good. supposed Thank to so have a third here. one at night, but that got cancelled. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm kind of glad about that. I mean, woof. <laughs> so <weak. laughs> well, we often do night shifts because being on the other side of the world, you know, it's nothing for Mikkel and I to be doing a two and four o'clock or something. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's nice and early for us, really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, that yeah. makes sense. Uh, so um, talking about today's topic, um, what do you guys think? Like, you know, top 10 categories for 2021. Why are we specifically talking about India? Uh, do you think India is an untapped market? Do you think there's potential there? Or do you already see a trend that's happening from India that you want to push right into it? So uh, starting with Mekla. Yeah, it's, uh, it, we see a clear trend of people looking to diversify their sourcing and uh, not put all their eggs in one basket. And India is a very strong alternative to China, um, given the large pool of you know low-cost labor that's uh, available, as well as um, India is a manufacturing hub for a large number of products, and it has already been exporting for decades now to a global markets. So um, yeah, I mean, India is a very, very strong uh, production hub, export hub. And um, if you're an Amazon e-commerce seller, there are beautiful products that you can source from India. that are very unique that are not found in any other country. And so you should definitely consider um, sourcing from India. And the products that we're gonna to show today are you know, the top product categories we see are very relevant for Amazon e-commerce sellers. I've already seen the categories and I'm really excited to talk about them. They're really unique, but there's so much demand on it um, on Amazon as well when I did my research. So it's going to be super interesting to talk about it. And uh, make, uh, Margaret, I just have one question for you. Do you think it's already too late to source for Q4 for people who are watching right now? Yeah, I think so. Look, you might be lucky to get somebody who's got some stock ready to go. But look, um, it, unless it's something that can be air freighted, but, you know, by the time you, most people private label, so you've got to do your packaging and all that. So, look, I think you need, you know, uh, especially for your first product, you know, four to six months lead time to, to actually get live on Amazon unless you're going to fly it in. And uh, I think every all the manufacturers would be far, you know, too busy now to start in October. But I think it's a good time to start looking at it because the manufacturers will slow down a little bit once they get all their orders sort of leaving now i think most of the orders will be leaving the factories around now so you know if, if you get in now you can get in for you know valentine's day it's starting again off we go next year so it's not that far away so if you want to do something to to get in for you know those sort of the things that are coming up again um you know it's time to start talking to manufacturers and move into uh, sort of your next year's sort of supply chain that sounds amazing. And I think this is the time of the year when I've seen suppliers being in a very good high spirits. So you can actually get a lot of, um, you know, work done, if I might say. So that's a really good answer. Thank you so much for answering that, uh, Margaret. So let's move on to the presentation. First, we're going to be talking about product categories, and I would be backing up with some products that I found using our tool, which I think are going to do really well uh, based on the category. So let's get started, Mekla. Okay, so do you want to share the screen? Okay, cool. So top categories to source from India. So here are the main categories that we're going to go through. And um, 
uh, some you know home products, ceramics. Again, these are categories that are very suitable for e-commerce and Amazon sellers. So just a quick background uh, myself, I'm the co-founder of India Sourcing Network. Uh, my experience is mostly in the sourcing industry in Asia. I've been working here for 20 years. Um, I've lived in China, worked in China for 10 years, worked in India. And for the last three years or so, I've been really focused on helping Amazon commerce sellers source products from uh, India. Mark, do you want to go? I do. Yes, look, and I'm the other co-founder together with my partner uh, of the India Sourcing Network. Uh, look, I've been sourcing from India, actually, it's getting close on five years now, and time's going by so quickly. Um, I was a coach on Megla's inaugural uh, India Sourcing trip uh, back, God, seems like forever ago, 2019 in October, um, where we had an absolute blast and can't wait to get back and do it again. Um, and look, I do some one-on-one -on -one coaching for people who are, are getting sort of stuck. Maybe they've done a, a course or something and just can't find the right steps to move through the Amazon maze. Um, and look, in my previous life, I've, um, you know, mentored small businesses and uh, my partner and I, you know, over our lifetime have run several businesses and I've managed um, companies and things. So, yeah, got a bit of a, a varied background. Cool. Okay, so the way that we're going to do this is uh, first, um, you know, Margaret and I, we're going to be talking about a specific category. We'll give an overview of the category, what kind of materials and what kind of products are available. And then for each category, Ria is going to share the product that she has found on Seller App. So um, the first five categories are going to be done by Margaret. So Mark, go ahead. No worries. Thank you. Yeah, now look, uh, you'll find India actually has some really unique products um, in all categories. But look, metal, I think they do really, really well. Uh, there's a lot of I suppose handcrafted metal and a lot of the uh, products aren't mass produced in India like they are from China so you'll find that uh, a lot of your products are actually handmade which is really surprising and don't panic they still can do it in the time frame but look the main materials you get out of there are uh, copper brass we've got bronze aluminium galvanized iron wrought iron and stainless steel now look in those categories there is just Oh, it's, it's too new. You can just go on all day at what you can get. But look, we've got some photos here of things like cutlery, um, that uh, beautiful sort of uh, wall uh, metal plaque, I suppose you'd call that. They're, they're, they do those really beautiful. Um, you can get pet urns. Uh, look, there's other things like Moscow mule mugs, stainless steel drinking glasses and mugs. You get bathroom accessories. Um, there's lots and lots of different wall decor. Um you can get even things we actually interviewed someone the other day that was um it's called he was called the brass man and he actually did like all door latches and catches and things like that that were a little bit different uh, you can get you know cast iron fire tools uh look it's just anything you can think of in metal um you can get done and it's a lot easier to get something custom made from India. They don't um, sort of have such high MOQs. So you can come along and, you know, get 500. You don't have to get 2,000 of something. And it's very unusual to, for an order to have to be that big to start off with. So, you know, if you want to just start off with, say, 500 pieces or something, it's a good opportunity uh, to do it. And a lot of those things, we've actually been to our factory and it's quite interesting. In the metal, you'll find a family actually making um, a lot of the products. So if you've got, you know, a coffee mug with a, a metal handle on it, they'll be actually sitting in this room and the family, it might be the grandfather and the father and the son, all learn this tr particular trade and they'll be sitting there and they'll do each individual handle by um, hand or those blades or those knives there. They'll actually polish them like by hand and finish them off with a polishing cloth it's not something that just goes bang through a machine so i think you get much higher quality um goods and different there are so many beautiful products i think you guys need to go and have a look what you can get back over to you i think rear if you want to yeah, I'll, I'll take over from here. So when we're talking about product suggestions and when you're looking for a product, of course, category does make a lot of um, difference in the product that you're selecting. But you also need to look at how many sellers are selling this uh, particular product that you're looking at. And you also need to understand customer demand, initial demand, uh, the BSR rank. Um, is the product that you're already looking at exists on Amazon? If it does, like, you know, um, what's the PIS index of it? So this is where seller apps, um, you know, product research um, do 
makes such a huge difference. So we have something called the opportunity score. Um, I will be sharing my screen in a while and showing you what opportunity score actually is. But we have PIX, uh, PIS, which means how much innovation you can make in the product, especially if you're looking at a product that already exists on Amazon. So when we're talking about metal category, we have, um, this is just a suggestion again. So we looked at something called a wall hanging and I have seen a lot of these, um, this product, uh, these products on, um, you know, Twitter, um, Instagram, Instagram Reels. So this is something which is really trendy currently. So it has a high revenue potential. It is also high competition. So keep that in mind. To beat the competition, you need to look at the PIS index and how much innovation you can add in your product. Um, the estimated orders for this particular product is above 100. So you ideally want to look at a product which has over 65 orders a day. Uh, that means that this is going to be a very sustainable product for you. And um, this is the ASIN that I've given. So you can definitely go on their uh, listing and check out if they're brand registered or not, what kind of ads they're running and check out more information about the product. So yeah, that is one of the products that um, I found using our tool and handing over to you, Margaret. Okay, thank you. Okay, now wooden products. Uh, I suppose India has quite some beautiful woods and one of the woods that I actually fell in love with uh, when we were over in India was mango wood. Uh, it's a local product they, and what happens is it's very sustainable because mango wood um, is locally grown and it's a mango from the mango tree. So a mango tree uh, actually bears fruit for about 10 to 12 years and then after that it becomes redundant. So it's say 15 years that tree would be actually cut down and used for wood. It's not like, you, you know, you're killing a 100-year-old, you know, tree that's uh, been around for a long time and they get replanted. So I think that's one really um, good thing for mango wood and, and it's actually um, very light wood as well. And I think it's it's different. You don't see it. I hadn't actually seen it a lot until um, we were actually over there and now I look for it and you do slowly. I think it's becoming more trendy. But you can also get acacia wood teak and pine now look there's hubs i suppose in india and i probably didn't mention that in the metal area it comes from a place called morabadad which is a couple of hours from delhi or about four hours in the traffic um, and the actual wood comes from Saranapur. Now, these are more up the north of India uh, where these products come from. Now, here we've just got a few photos of things you can get, and you can see down in the bottom uh, corner there the most beautiful uh, wooden trays and bowls, and they've all got like an etching on the wood. Uh, they're really different, so there's very, you know, a lot of categories there. Um, there's the wooden dog bowls. Uh, look, you can just get any sort of giftware, those um, metal... Uh, well, the hangers with the metal hooks on them are really quite unique as well. But uh, look, there's you can have bathroom accessories, trays for your bathroom, uh, look, wall hangings. There's a lot of shelving and things like that done out of the different woods. Uh, so, yeah, once again, um, so many opportunities and so many different uh, looks. One thing they don't do in India is bamboo. So you, if you're looking for bamboo, that's very China-centric. Uh, but the other woods, I think you'll be surprised if you have a look at them. They are probably, uh, you know, I think nicer than uh, bamboo, which is really overdone. I think there's a lot and a lot of bamboo um, on Amazon now, so it's nice to get something different. Over to you, Ria. Um, thank you for that, Margaret. Uh, I see that Anish has a question. So what bestseller in which market? So it was Amazon bestseller under, um, if you type the keyword, uh, metal wall hanging, it's the Amazon bestseller in terms of that. So um, thank you for I that question. I think in the US, maybe did he, uh, did he mean which country? Oh yeah, all the data is yeah. for the US market. Um, okay. So it's, you can source from India, sell it, but the um, category that we're looking at or the country but that we're looking at is USA currently. But our product research tool is supported in multiple geographies, so make sure that you change the location when you're doing the research as well. Uh, so product suggestion that comes under wood was a large welcome sign. So Margaret, do you suggest getting customized name signs from India? Because I think that's going to be a very tedious job, don't you think? Oh, look, no, you could easily get that done. That wouldn't be too difficult for them to do. No, look, I've seen some really complex, um, you know, signs and things like that done. Like there's, yeah, no, that wouldn't be, uh, you know, too hard at all. I think that's a really good product. And something like that, a bit quiche I think sometimes um, the Americans seem to like um, those sort of things on the wall. So I think that, yeah, something like that is, um, you know, really good. 
So you could do a dog one and you could do a cat one. So there's you know, quite, a, quite a few options there with that one. No, I think, you know, that could be a nice niche for people because, you know, people love their pets and, you know, to have that sort of, you know, even if you had it like, you know, in your mudroom where your dog comes running in the back door and has his shake and cleans his feet off, um, you know, that would be really lovely. Definitely. So um, I would suggest this product because that is, it has low competition. So, um, you know, if you are looking to source something from India, this is one of the products that, as Margaret said, uh, you can get in a really good quality as well. So um, moving on, Margaret. Okay, okay. Now, eco-friendly. Look, um, I think India does really pride itself on being, um, like I suppose, an eco-friendly country. Um, it's very conscious of manufacturing eco-friendly. Look, we know a lot of uh, the factories actually, you know, have solar panels and completely run their factories um, sort of as sustainable as, as possible. Um, and look, here in this photo, we've got, and it's and this is our favourite, the wallet down in the very bottom corner with it being the lady's hand. Megla actually has one of these wallets. Uh, we're a big fan of this. And she also has the handbag that matches it, I might add. Um, and they're absolutely beautiful. Um, they're actually made out of, I suppose you would call it a, it's not, we call it leather, but it's not really leather. It's um, more of a, um, I suppose, vegan type leather. What would you call it, Megler? Material. I guess just. Yeah, we, do, we don't have a word material. for it. Yeah. Material. <laughs> it's not really seen, fabric. Seen, it's not really leather. Leather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of leather, um, the vegan leather made out of mango skins and pineapple skins or something of that sort. Yeah, so it could be that. That's what, it, that's what it is. Yeah. So we don't really know exactly what name we would call that. But look, also, you can do, there's a lot of jute. Those handbags up the top um, are done with jute. You can get all the uh, different eco friendly um, plates there and uh, the mats on the right hand side. Uh, so there's a, quite a lot of um, textiles done in eco-friendly, um, you know, sort of manner. And all the packaging, you'll find um, a lot of the packaging you get from India, you don't get a lot of plastic in it. They're very conscious. A lot of our products are wrapped in, I suppose, like almost a brown tissue paper and things like that than having a lot of plastic. So um, I think in that you know, respect, and they also do a lot of recycled um, plastic bottles um, and make um, products from those as well so yeah there's a, quite a lot of um you know different things that you can get in the eco-friendly line from the uh, indian so and a lot of them come from co-ops out in the um i suppose in the country you get a lot of women who work doing some of these eco-friendly products as well like um in the um, you know in the villages so that's good we're going to right. do your turn um so i have a product suggestion there which i've not mentioned me uh Please feel free to back me up on this. What about pencils which have like seeds in them? So once the pencil is like really short and you cannot write with it, you can plant them. Is that possible to source from India? I don't know. I haven't actually come across seeds, but and I'm also not sure. You'd have to just be careful trying to get seeds into the US. I, you'd have to do a little oh, bit of definitely. research on um, like that's a plant material. So I'm not too sure about... Um, getting seeds through the US customs that, it, you know, you might have a bit of an issue with that. It, you'd have to actually speak to a manufacturer that's exported that, I think, to, to find out about that one. Oh, got it. Thank you. Okay. Well, we're on to ceramics. Now, um, look, India, a lot of their ceramics are more what we would call pottery looking products, I suppose. Um, they're not so, um, I suppose, fine china, but we actually have interviewed the most beautiful fine bone china factory that does the most amazing um, tea sets and coffee sets and things like that. Um, and they are absolutely stunning. But as you can see here in the uh, picture, there's, you know, you can get things like the um, incense burners and dinner sets there's just so many things coffee mugs vases um they do a lot of lot of ceramics and um, you know terracotta and bakeware there's a lot of options you can have there for ceramics as well on to the next have you got another slide for that one so coming to the product uh, suggestion, which I found using our tool was um, a nonstick blue cookware made up of ceramic. And I have seen a lot of, um, you know, 
my friends in the U.S. ordering pressure cookers from India because of the price difference, because it's more expensive in the States and it's really cheap to manufacture uh, cookers in India. So that's something that you want to might look into. However, coming to ceramic nonstick uh, cookware, you can see that this product has really good estimated orders per day. So it has close to uh, 357 orders a day. It has really high demand and it has really high revenue potential as well. So this is something that you definitely should look into. Make sure to make sure make sure that you are, are not um, selling in a category which already has a lot of sellers in it. So if it, the category has more than, let's say, or if a product has more, let's say, more than 10 sellers, that's something you should not be looking into. Otherwise, uh, I remember specifically for this product, and not a lot of sellers were selling this. So you might want to like jump onto a tool and understand more about this product as well. So yeah, moving on, Margaret. Okay, home furnishings. India does that really well. They also have so many great products um, in the home furnishing. So you can get things from cotton, wool, jute, silk, and once again, the recycled PET. Now, if you look on the photo, there's a rug on the bottom in the middle with the bright colored one. That's actually made from recycled um, bottle tops um, and woven into uh, a beautiful mat. I really, that's one of my favorite products that I've seen. I love that. We've, we've seen a lot of those when we're over in the Delhi Fair and they're absolutely beautiful. And in that PET, they also do things like drink coasters. So there's a lot of products made out of the recycled PET. On the left-hand side are some absolutely gorgeous doormats that one of our suppliers uh, do from Kerala down the very bottom of um, India. Now, they're actually made from, oh, the company's called Coco Tough, and they're actually made from coconut kernels. Am I right, Mary? Is that right? Coconut kernels, I think? Coconut Coco husk. Tough. Husk, that's husk. the word. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was yeah. trying to think of what it was here. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you'll find, and look, they're one of the biggest companies um, that they supply, IKEA. I know they do Bunnings here in Australia, so they are a huge manufacturer, but they still will actually do small um, orders for you, and they even actually do drop shipping of the, you know, you can do one-off mats, have them designed with, you know, people's names or whatever on them. So that's something that's really, really good, and some of their mats are just stunning when you see them. Um, and on the right, we've got some more rugs. We've got cushion covers. Um, that's a puff there that's been sort of crocheted. And there's obviously the plant holders there. But look, there's so many lovely home furnishings. They do a lot of block printing as well as screen printing. So there's some really traditional um, ways of manufacturing some materials as well. So it's good, you know, to go in and, and you know, investigate a little bit more what you can get in the home furnishings as well. Okay, over to you, Ria. Uh, the product suggestion here is a baby chair that's made out of wood. So um, it has really high demand. It has a decent number of estimated orders a day. However, the problem with um, these bulky products is that your overhead costs are going to be really high because Amazon storage fees is going to be high. Um, if your storage fees is high, um, so since it's a bulky product, your shipping um, charges are going to be high as well. But if you can cover that, I think this is a really good product that you can uh, look into. And as Margaret already mentioned, India is a hub for wooden furniture and such so of course this is something that you should definitely be looking into and something like this can also be a shipped flat pack so you know like mm -hmm. ikea type yeah. furniture <laughs> you could probably do yeah, that like for this kind it of collapses right yeah yes yeah. yes yeah so i think you've just got to make sure you've got a big margin if you're going to do oversize um, you know, you've just got to be able to build in an extra probably for something, I'd say, that size, you know, like an extra $20 buffer for all the additional shipping, you know, for the actual product, the, the storage in Amazon, the fees in Amazon, uh, and then, the, you know, the uh, cost of, of moving it around, you know, in the US with storage and things. So, yeah, but no, I think that's a really good product and a very different. I mean, that's quite a, a trendy looking um, high chair, I think. It's, you know, a lot nicer than some I've seen. So it looks great. Yeah. Okay, so on to leather. Now, leather is a main export categories. There are lots of different varieties of uh, leather that can be found. So there's full grain, top grain. Uh, there's also chrome free leather that's being promoted nowadays, which is basically an only leather that's processed without the use of chrome. And um, in terms of products, there's fashion products, so bags, wallets, bells. And these kinds of products utilize a more softer kind of leather, uh, especially things like apparel. You know, there's a beautiful range of apparel that's available from Indian leather. And in fact, um, the, the suppliers in India, they uh, supply leather garments to 
top retailers in Europe and Italy and also very high quality leather garments coming out of India. And a lot of these suppliers have really good design capability as well. So if you just have an idea for, let's say, a leather garment or a bag, you share your idea with them. They have designers in-house that would help you to you know, design that product and bring it to life, so to speak. And then there's also other things like equestrian products. Now, equestrian products use a different kind of leather. It's, it's a harder leather and more uh, stiff. So you'll find those kinds of leathers are also available. And um, a lot of various options in terms of you know, uh, accessories, um, aprons, organizers. We've seen people being very innovative um, you know, during this, these, these times with uh, leather specifically. We have one supplier that produces bags, and now he's launched an entire range of home decor items or home use items made out of leather, including um, you know, key um, home, um, what is it called? Like a desk organizer or a key storage kind of bag and then uh, drawer pulls and hooks and lots of different things that are um, traditionally not really made out of leather, but he's added leather components to um, all of these different items. So really good variety of leather products. And there are different production hubs for leather. So in the north, there's a city called Kanpur, where most of the equestrian kind of products are manufactured. And um, in, there's also Noida, which is right beside Delhi, where a lot of the bags and garments are manufactured. And then down south in Chennai, in other cities, um, there's also some leather production hubs and also the tanneries are there down south. And then Kolkata on the, in the east is also another leather production hub. Uh, moving on to the product suggestion, I think, uh, Mekla, you are very right to say that, you know, a lot of um, demand on Amazon is there for leather. And I've seen a lot of keyword research for genuine leather. So people are looking for genuine leather. And I mean, India, as you mentioned, is the right place to source that from. So a product that in my head stands out is an auto car steering wheel cover. So of course, a lot of research has to go if your manufacturer can provide for like different types of sizes that comes with different models of cars. But it has a estimated orders of more than 200 a day, which is amazing. Uh, there's a really high demand, but the only drawback to this product or one of the drawbacks to this product was low profit margins but of course if you find the right supplier you can increase your profit margins so what do you think about that Mikla? so we'd have to look for a supplier for this in india i'm sure they'd be able to produce it we haven't lost a supplier that does genuine leather steering wheel covers but yeah i think this is a very interesting category and it can surely be developed uh, by a supplier that is experienced in leather yeah and another thing was leather belts for men um so oh. that's something that you might want to look into as well okay interesting i think i'm also seeing a lot of people doing sets for men like gift sets like you know a wallet bag passport oh, yeah. holder card holder like gifts because it's so difficult to find a gift for uh, you know a boy or a man right so <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, before another, we move on, Mekla, yeah, I just want yeah. to answer a question that Anish asked for quarry mats. Um, I did do a quick research of art search for you. Um, there's not a lot of estimated orders. Estimated orders are below 65 or 60. That's what we recommend. So if you want to do a more intensive research, you can definitely go to our platform and do a more intensive research. But from a first hand, like from the first look, I don't think it's like a good choice because of the estimated orders. But of course, it's something that you can, you know, find more deeper research into. So that's the answer. Over to you, Mekla. Okay. So stationery is another category um, that you can source from India. And there's very unique and innovative kind of products coming out. So there's, uh, first of all, handmade paper. There are so many different unique items that you can make, make from handmade paper, including journals, diaries, calendars, greeting cards, um, even books. And then Indian suppliers are very innovative in, in the different combinations of materials that they use for these uh, stationary products. So there, you won't find the you know regular like staplers and scissors, maybe yes. <laughs> Ria was telling us that her family <laughs> probably manufactures scissors just before we started. But um, yeah, usually those kinds of products are mostly you know made in China, but in India you'll find the more innovative creative kind of eco-friendly products made from natural materials. And you'd also have things like organizers, desk accessories, diaries, gift boxes, bags. Um, we also interviewed a, a supplier recently. In fact, the company that Marg was men mentioning just now that makes eco-friendly products out of cork material 
they have launched a series of products made out of cork that uh, can be used as a desktop accessory. So it's very eco-friendly, totally made out of um, cork material, and it can be used for you know keeping your phone and your other um, stationary items, organizing things on your desk. Very innovative, creative kind of product. We also see things like laptop stands made out of wood and metal. So you won't see a lot of plasticky kind of stationery coming out of India, but it's more of the innovative, creative products made out of natural materials. So the project suggestion here was a really trendy one, I would say, because um, a lot of small businesses have boomed during this pandemic and a lot of small businesses are selling jewelry. So um, the particular product that you see on the screen right now is a cardboard jewelry gift box. And the estimated orders, as you can see, is pretty decent. It has a high revenue potential. The price of this cardboard box, however, was really high. So if someone can bring the price down, it will also decrease your high over overhead cost and I think you can target a lot of small businesses which need these kind of boxes to package their jewelry in and you know that could be one of your target audiences and I think this product is going to do really well um, on Amazon and uh, Mekla while you're talking about wooden items I just realized that I was in Sarankur um, like last last month and I bought this beautiful whoops I found this beautiful let me just you know stop sharing the screen um, yeah. I found this beautiful phone holder, like, this is how you keep your phone in, oh, and it was, oh. Oh, and it so is, cute. <laughs> right, and I love it, I fell in love with it, and it was, like, cheap too, and I use it every day, so, like, product opportunities, people, right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that is nice, that is not different. Very yeah, different, so, yeah. yeah, okay, moving on with our webinar. <laughs> <laughs> I think these jewelry boxes are really interesting because I was just thinking, um, I, I was talking about this company that launched a range of eco-friendly products and, you know, coir and, and different kind of materials. And they also had this small little chest of drawers that you could put on your uh, table. And then you can, you know, like put your little jewelry or rings or anything inside those drawers. So they could also do these gift boxes. So, I mean, if you had a gift mm. box that that's made out of this natural eco-friendly material, that could make really, really go well with a very high end gift. You know, if you have to give mm -hmm. somebody special, something very, very special. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Textiles. Now this is one of the major export categories uh, from India. However, we do find a lot of Amazon sellers kind of stay away from apparel because it's not an easy category to manage. Uh, you do need a lot of different sizes, variations, and you do need to stock a lot of inventory because you know you need so many sizes and then you also need a lot of cash because when you're uh, typically MOQs are higher for apparel um, you know compared to other categories such as wood or metal so but if you are if you do have um, capital and if you are uh, an established seller apparel is a really good category to get into and india specializes in cotton cotton blend silk wool most of the naturally occurring materials are really good from India, but there is also polyester and man-made materials, but um, natural materials are um, you know, more competitively priced. You'll find a bigger variety of these products. And um, organic cotton is another category um, that is really popular and doing quite well. There are different kinds of uh, products that are being exported, such as uh, bed sheets, baby products, baby blankets, baby garments, so organic cotton is something uh, you could look into. And in terms of, you know, um, products, there's apparel, of course, both woven and knitted. There's undergarments. There's, in fact, the city in South India called Tirupur that is a production hub for knitted garments. And there are hundreds and thousands of factories in Tirupur of all different types of, um, you know, knitted garments and all different types of uh, sized factories. There are small workshops. There are huge gigantic factories that produce um, hundreds of thousands of pieces per month. And um, it's it's a very important hub for knitted products. Um, another thing you'll find is that there are a lot of handloom fabrics that are coming out of India as well. And this is something that's very unique to India. So each state in India has a different kind of fabric that they are known for. 
And these fabrics are very different and unique in terms of the prints that they have, the embellishments, the, the, way, of the, the way that they are woven, um, the kind of, uh, you know, the, the colors that are used and the prints that are used on the on the fabrics. So this over here is um, block printed table mats and sorry, napkins. And uh, this is a, a type of printing technique that's very old in India. It's mostly done in North India in Jaipur and a very traditional kind of um, uh, printing technique. It's actually done by hand, but the, and all the uh, dyes that they use for block printing are natural dyes. So there are no like chemicals used in this kind of printing and uh, very beautiful colors, vibrant colors. So um, quite interesting. Okay, um, so Maria, yeah, this is to, good, right? Yeah, this is the product that I will be showing you um, in the um, in the tool. But before moving that, um, block printed napkins are again hot on Amazon. Um, if you look for keyword research in block printed, it holds a lot of volume. So if that's something that you really want to do, make sure that you are backing up your products with keyword research as well. It's just going to help you um, in the future. So I'm going to take over the screen, Mekla. Just give me a second. Um, all right, so clear crossbody bag is something that caught my eye while I was doing my product research. So um, first of all, I think this product is really relevant with all the concerts and stadiums coming in with their rules of how you need to have a transparent bag. So uh, while the data is loading, um, there you go. So this is a product that I looked into. So this is our key, uh, product research tool. And if you click on the product, it shows you the Amazon page. So as you can see, this is the number one bestseller in sports fans, handbags, and purses. Um, and then this is something that is really interesting. It's called opportunity score. So click on that, and then you'll see the demand of the product is high. The revenue potential is high. Competition is low. Overhead costs are low. Profit margins are also high. So this is something that you really, really want to look at um, if you're planning to sell like you know clear body purses, or if you're looking for just a product that you know are ne is never going to go out of demand because of like you know the rules of the stadiums and concerts that they have. So um, the BSR is. 134 estimated orders are close to 500 a day so that means your revenue is going to be really amazing as well so that is the product that i wanted to show over to you Mikla. um wait we can't hear you of course i was muted <laughs> <laughs> okay, home office. So um, yeah, we put this category in because it's definitely in demand. I mean, still people are working from home and, uh, you know, there are COVID restrictions and people um, are still in lockdown, <laughs> including Marg. Um, or are you out of lockdown now? I, I keep forgetting. Oh, we're, <laughs> been, we're, uh, in yeah, this week, we, we're rain last week. I can't keep track myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but home office products are still in demand. And there are a lot of creative, innovative products that are coming out of India. And so you see this product over here. This is a desk organizer that I was just referring to that's made from plant-based materials as well as hemp. Hemp is also a very eco-friendly material, similar to jute, uh, but it is not made from this. It doesn't come from the same plant. It's made from a different plant, but it has a very similar feel, but it's not as coarse as jute is. But again, very... Uh, bio and eco-friendly and then this is a mouse pad also made from eco-friendly cork material and then this is a wooden um, clock that's actually in the shape of an elephant and it's probably also from Saharan or very similar to the phone holder that you were just showing mm. so yeah. in terms of uh, um, materials there's you know all types of wood metal fabrics bamboo uh, plant you have laptop stands clocks desk organizers paperweights and some text is hidden behind these images, <laughs> but very interesting <laughs> materials. And, um, you know, even though the categories or the keyword, um, um, you know, saturated on Amazon, if you, there need to, di to differentiate these products, for example, laptop stands, you know, there are hundreds of laptop stands on Amazon and maybe a very competitive category. But if you have a laptop stand that's made from wood or that's, wood. um, you know, got something unique in it that that differentiates it from the rest of the kind of um, laptop sample out there. Uh, I think that might be an opportunity as well. 
And it's, I can just see a great opportunity there. I can see that elephant being the phone holder, that clock, and you could have maybe a desk organiser. So you could do like three different pieces, you know, and build on, you know, like the elephant, and, you know, sort of make a really lovely sort of something that's very different. Uh, and I think then you've got a better chance of selling something, you know, on Amazon. It's not the same, same. So even though it's in that category, you can stand out a lot more. And we, something we haven't touched on here is you can have a great backstory because you can tell a story that it's handmade in India, not mass produced. So mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, with that as well, it's a really good um, sort of advertisement for um, your product that it's, you know, it's eco-friendly, that it's handmade, and it is so different to what you see the norm from China. Yeah, and it's very diff it's very important for you to be different to beat the competition, which we can see is currently uh, this product is facing because it has such a high revenue potential. The estimated orders are quite good as well. So I think if you apply the points that Margaret said to this product, you can actually you know beat the competition on the platform. What do you think about that, Margaret? Yeah, no, I think it's good. Yeah, no, I'd say that's a really good organizer. And once again, you could have you know the elephant behind it as a tusk outside and make it its body or something that you know i mean it's your own imagination so i think those things just make the, so much difference to just a normal um you know looking product something that stands out on the page and that's what you want i mean the eyes are going to cast past all the you know say square plain boxes and go to something that's a little bit more unique definitely Okay, so the last category that we wanted to highlight is sporting goods. And um, there are a lot of different kinds of uh, products that are available. So um, one of the biggest categories is sports balls. And again, there is a production hub or a city in North India called Jalandhar that is uh, the, the hub for, for producing these sports equipment. And there's a lot of different types of balls coming out. Um, there are play balls as well as as regular, you know, day-to-day -day kind of balls, um, um, like for kids, and there's also balls for uh, professional uh, or professionals. And um, apart from footballs, there's soccer balls. Um, there's also in basketballs, volleyballs, all different types of balls. Um, they're made from leather, PU, um, and um, they're also hand-stitched balls. So hand-stitched balls are supposed to be very you know, high quality, much, uh, they last longer, they're more durable. So those kinds of balls are also available. And then there's also categories like um, uh, bats, like cricket bats and uh, table tennis rackets, badminton rackets, gloves for like boxing gloves or golf gloves. Those are some categories as well. Sports shoes is another category and there are quite a few suppliers again in the in North India that have um, you know large factories producing shoes in very high volume. So that's also a category that you could consider. Um, but again, just like you know apparel, you have to be a bit cautious when you're sourcing shoes because you do need to stock different sizes, and it does some kind of uh, like a decent investment. It does, and okay, it has so we didn't have any products for this yeah. category, right? No, but just a word of caution when it comes to apparel and sporting goods, like in shoes especially, is because it's so much, it has a high return rate. So make sure that, you know, you are ready to deal with Amazon reimbursement yeah. services and stuff like that as well. So just a word of caution when you're dealing with categories like these. Yes, absolutely. So I guess uh, I, I just want to maybe talk a little little bit about our platform, India Sourcing Network. So you can find this platform at NET, and uh, this is the website that provides Amazon and e-commerce sellers everything they need to build a private label products business sourcing from India. And there are three pillars of our platform. One is content, so we provide a lot of information and guidance on how to source products from India, because there's a lot of information available about sourcing from China but there's not much information available about uh, sourcing from India. So we offer workshops, we do live webinars, we have a lot of blogs um, related to sourcing from India. And then we also um, have a list of vetted export manufacturers on the website. So if you are ready to source from India, you can contact these manufacturers. They have been vetted by us 
and uh, we have checked their documents to ensure that they have their own factories, they're not trading companies, that they have export experience. And we also have a list of service providers. So whether uh, you need a sourcing agency, freight forwarder, quality control, lawyer, any type of service that you need when you're sourcing from, from India we in, in on our website as well. And you can contact contact these companies directly. We also have a Facebook that you can be part of. Um, it's a community of over 7,000 people and uh, we are very you know, proactive and engaged in the Facebook group. If anybody has a question, uh, you can come in there and uh, ask the question and then we'll, we'll be very happy to um, help you in your India sourcing journey. And this is the link of the Facebook group in case you're interested. You can also just search for sourcing from India or India sourcing on Facebook and uh, you'll be able to find our Facebook group. So yeah, that is about it for our presentation. That was really fun. I mean, it's such a great time whenever I have you two on the screen and like, you know, the flow of the session is amazing. And I always learn so much from Mekla and Margaret. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, before we end the session, we have one question from... Um, Aditya, he says, let us know about the hard goods category. Do you have any insights on that? Well, we did talk about metal and wooden products at the beginning. So um, I think, Aditya, if you didn't join us in the beginning, then you can probably, um, you know, go watch the replay. But hard goods, yeah, basically there's metal and wood. Those are the two categories. A lot of the products are home decor, home use products. There's also furniture. Uh, in, in, in the wooden products category and a lot of different types of metal, um, mostly, you know, like brass, iron, um, stainless steel utensils, for example. In terms of wood, there's uh, mango wood, acacia wood. Um, yeah. Yeah, those are really good examples. And of course, copper bo water bottles are always a hit, I would say. <laughs> so have you seen those yeah. sell a lot yeah. uh, or I being think. sourced a lot? <laughs> Yeah, I think that might be a bit saturated now. I don't know whether I'd be game. I've looked in there and it's quite busy, actually. Um, water bottles, have, you know, it's it's very hard because you've got a niche down, I think, on that because there's just so much competition, uh, you know, to, to stand out on, the, on water bottles. Definitely. Yeah, I was about to mention the competition as well. So, yeah, I think we are done for today. Thank you so much for being here. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comment box below and we will answer them for you. And of course, the link to the Facebook group uh, will be posted in the description as well. So uh, come back in, let's say, um, 30 minutes and you will see the link there. So uh, thank you so much for being here, Mika and Margaret and everyone for watching. If you like this video, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. We are close to 10K subscribers and when we reach 10,000 subscribers. We do have something special coming up, so keep an eye out on that. Until the next time, happy selling. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.